Hi, everyone, and thank you for um, sticking around for this very informative segment that we're going to have now. We are going to talk about CMT and exercise, and it will be presented by Dr. Bavanti Jones and Abby Yenzer. This is going to be our probably our most interactive session. Um, so note, you can adjust your video by clicking on what type of view you want to see, such as the speaker view or the gallery view. Um, you have little icons above your video that you can see. So feel free to adjust your view. Also, um, Dr. Jones and Abby are going to go over a brief presentation. And then I'm going to begin polling everyone who's actually in attendance today. So what that means is I'm going to put up a slide with nine questions. And you will simply click on the answer that best fits you. And then I'll be sharing those answers with everyone who's viewing. From there, Dr. Jones and Abby will begin discussing those outcomes, and we're going to take all your questions regarding exercise and CMT at that time. So at this point, Dr. Jones and Abby, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, so I spoke with Dr. Jones uh, prior to putting this presentation together, and this is just sort of, um, you know, like the main points when we talk to patients about exercise and what we recommend. Um, I think we've both mentioned now, we want you to focus on, on low impact um, for not only safety reasons, but also um, uh, to prevent injuries um, and falls. So when we look at strength, we're not necessarily focusing on weightlifting. That doesn't mean you can't do weightlifting, um, but just know that you can build strength from other forms of exercise. Um, one of my coworkers was a huge proponent for TheraBand, so she wanted me to put that in there, that these are also great ways to exercise that don't involve having to hold weights or do um, big movements. You can do a lot of seated exercises with TheraBands to build both hip, ankle, hip and knee and ankle strength. Um, and if you want me to demonstrate any of these exercises, feel free to ask in, in the questions and I can, I can demonstrate some of them. As far as cardio is concerned, when we, we ask you to do cardio, the whole goal is to get your heart rate up. It doesn't necessarily matter how you do that. Um, swimming is great. It, it takes some of the weight off of your joints. So if that, that is a limiting factor to how you exercise, that can be a good option. Um, walking is fine as well. Um, and then using a recumbent bike is another way to kind of get you off your feet, but still get your heart rate up. And the other thing I really like to encourage is to, to enjoy it. Just because it looks, it doesn't look like normal exercise doesn't mean that it's not um, exercise. If, if you're working up a sweat, if, if you're staying active, that's, that's the key there. Um, so it can be dancing, it can be taking a little hike um, safely with the right assistive devices. You know, again, safety is key. Um, it can be gardening. It can, it can be playing with your grandkids. You know, all of that is, is activity and is, is beneficial. Okay, so why, why do we ask you to exercise? Why do we ask you to be active? You know, it's, it's not necessarily just, you know, exercise, just activity in general. One, it helps us maintain our strength, um, helps us maintain balance, and balance is a combination of, of strength and uh, nerve feedback. So if we don't necessarily have great nerve feedback from our ankles um, and our joints, you know, we're really going to rely a little bit more on that strength as well as the use of bracing and assistive devices for balance. Um, it improves your endurance, your ability to make it through the day and keep, um, um, keep going basically to get everything done that you want to get done um, and improve your energy. It's good for bone health, um, cardiovascular health, again, just using those muscles, um, the heart, the diaphragm for the lungs. It's good for mental health um, and it's good for a sense of community, getting out there and exercising with friends and family. Um, and then I just put in some, some general ideas of exercise you can do um, with CMT. So starting with the very basics, ankle circles, ankle pumps, 
heel and toe raises. All of those you can do sitting. Um, they, don't, they don't have to be done in standing. Uh, if, you've, if you've got the strength and the ability, you can do sit to stands. Um, it is, it's sort of like a precursor to a squat. That doesn't mean the goal is working up to squatting, but it, it's, it's an activity that we all do every day um, that sometimes can get challenging, especially if, if you don't do it that often. So making that one of your exercises can be really beneficial. I also really like core exercises. They can help with balance as well. Um, and things like yoga or chair yoga are good for the core um, and the hips. And it, and again, we're looking at gentle stuff and not necessarily sit-ups. Sit-ups aren't the best thing for our body. That's not necessarily um, a movement that we were designed to do, but there are, there are plenty other core exercises you can do in sitting, like trunk rotations, which is simply going from end range to one side to end range to the other. And I'm just sitting at my table doing that exercise. Um, and you can, if you hold at that end range, you can really feel your core working. Um, so we did ankles, now I think in wrist circles, same thing with the wrists, just that active range of motion. And even doing this while you're sitting watching TV keeps those muscles active. Um, it keeps, you know, that minimum amount of strength in there to do that movement. Uh, and lastly is your stretches. So you've probably heard from every doctor, every physical therapist you've been to that you should be doing stretches and that you should be doing them forever. Um, and that's the case, you know, like I, I think you should all stretch every single day. I think it's great. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be sitting there for 30 seconds stretching. You can use um, certain types of braces to help with stretching. Um, but some form of stretching every day is, is really beneficial. And if you guys have any particular questions about stretches, I would be happy to demonstrate those as well. And then lastly, just a word of caution, um, things we want you to take into consideration before just going out and, and working out. So the goal of exercise is not pain or fatigue. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't want you doing something. If you're having pain with activity, we would really like you to reach out to someone like us, whether it's in the MBA clinic or your primary care physician, just to kind of chat with what your options are. Um, and that stretching and, and mobility not only help improve mobility, but they help prevent injury. So if your muscles are tight, and you decide to exercise, you're, you can put yourself at a higher risk of injury because those muscles are tight, um, if that makes sense. So you, you want to have the length in the muscle available to do the exercises you're trying to do. Um, always rest as needed and make sure you're in a good posture. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but this is important for exercise too. If you are slouched or if you are forcing yourself to do something that maybe is a little too hard for you and, and you're compensating with a poor posture, um, that can do more damage than good. Um, and you can also adapt exercises. So if there's something that you've seen other people do or that's been recommended for you to do that's in sitting or standing or lying down, you can usually find adaptations of those exercises to be done in a more comfortable position that again allows you to not compensate, to be doing it correctly, um, to, get, to get more benefit from that. Um, and I touched on that proper, proper back support when you're doing exercises and refrain from straining. Um, and then utilizing, and kind of coming back to the safety here, utilizing the appropriate assistive devices and braces, they'll help you improve your movement and decrease unnecessary energy expenditure and prevent injury. Um, and then kind of what Caitlin talked about, using the proper bracing for you, for your level of um, strength and, and the level of need so that we're, we're safe and we have the right amount of stability while we're up and moving around and then use the appropriate assistive devices. All right, thank you very much, Abby. I now wanna open up our polling feature. 
So you will see these questions launched on your computer. Simply answer each question that best fits your exercise routine. And when you are done, just simply hit submit. All right, we're, we're starting to get some answers here. While we are waiting, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions, Abby and Dr. Jones? Okay. Sure. Um, this one is, um, my, pointer, my pointing finger and thumb are really curling and weak. What exercises do you recommend? Uh, first and foremost, I would recommend stretching. Um, making sure if they are starting to curl in to, to keep that range of motion. Um. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree with that as well. Okay. There are some, you know, small braces or uses of uh, elastic bands that kind of kind of help hold those fingers up, but, or you can use them to provide a little resistance mm -hmm. when you're uh, moving your finger. Mm hmm like, um, but those might be helpful. Okay. How much progression can exercise actually stop? So, I can add it. So Sorry. <laughs> exercise does not stop progression. I think that's the way to be the clearest about it. It does not stop progression, but it can slow things down. Okay. How that it slows down depends on your type of CMT and uh, your disease process. Um, but we know it slows it down, so that's why we consider it important to do. Okay. Um, this person's asked, what are some muscle strengthening workouts someone who has had reconstructive foot surgery and hasn't been able to use their leg in over seven months to help build strength up? Do you have any exercises or workouts that you could um, potentially suggest to that person? Yeah, so I would, I would start very light and very small. So we're not obviously looking at weight bearing squats, lunges, anything like that. I would start with just your active range of motion. So pumping your ankles up and down, um, straightening and bending your leg, um, working on hip strength, which you can do seated or lying. Um, I love to recommend what's called four way straight leg raises. So you would do hip flexion or lifting your leg in front of you, then laying on your side and abducting or lifting your leg up. So the top leg, you can also do adduction, which is lifting the bottom leg up um, and then laying on your stomach and lifting your leg up off the surface that you're on. Um, just to start making sure you've got that hip strength. Um, but again, being able to work with you and see what your points of weakness are is always going to be better than um, the suggestions I can make here. So if you have access to a physical therapist or a physician um, who could maybe walk with what your points of weakness are and, and also following the protocol post-surgery to make sure that you're not um, yes. doing anything that you shouldn't be doing. Sure. Okay. Um. How many days do you recommend for cardio versus strengthening? And is stretching every day in your mind on top of cardio and strengthening? I think what they're saying is that more important. And then their second part to that is, I have seen some people who exercise to exhaustion. What are the concerns if you do exercise to exhaustion? So I, I, I recommend that you don't exercise to exhaustion. Um, you, you have to remember here, and I think I touched on this a little bit earlier that, um, 
the way our, our muscles work are as, you know, as a unit. So the more you do, the more muscle fibers you recruit. Um, when you have a neuromuscle disorder, especially CMT, not all of those muscle fibers, uh, muscle units are, are innervated because of either the axonal or demyelinating features of your CMT. So you're now using a lot more of certain muscle groups than others. So those certain muscle groups are going to fatigue faster um, and you still have to use them the next day, right? And those are still the only ones that you can use. So you, want, you don't necessarily want to wear out those groups um, with exercise when you have to use them to shower, bathe, dress, get up and down off the, you know, the, the chair, whatever else you need to do. Um, so that's why we really don't focus on exhaustion or fatigue. Like we don't want you pushing that far. And so I'll add in, you know, the question about whether we, what do we prioritize mm -hmm. like, you know, versus stretching and strengthening. So stretching and strengthening, I think should, well, stretching especially should be done every day um, as possible. Um, especially getting your large joints of your, um, your wrists, your elbows, your ankles and knees, and then even doing stretching of your fingers and toes where possible to allow that you to maintain that range of motion is important every day. Um, also, I'm a big proponent of cardio um, as well, you know, five times a week, at least, you know, 20 minutes if you can, doing something to get your heart rate up. And in some ways, you can combo your, your stretching with your cardio. Um, for some people who are not able to walk and using wheelchairs, you can actually get um, even those hand pedal bike or the foot pedal bikes, you can stick them on the table and use your hands to really pedal. And if you stretch it further in front of you, you're stretching your arms out more um, and using that pedal to help you too. So you're doing a little stretching and strengthening by um, forcing your arms to be out a little bit further and um, getting your heart rate up and pumping in that way. Um, and similar, getting out and walking is still considered cardio. If walking is difficult for you. Getting your pace up as, you know, as you can be able to tolerate that, I think are all good things that you could consider. Okay. <clears throat> is an elliptical good for cardio or is it too much for the feet and ankles? I think it depends on the person. Um, you know, if, if you feel like if you if you're not frequently spraining your ankles and you have good balance um, and you you feel safe on that equipment, I think it's fine. But I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. Okay. Um, we are at about sixty two percent people that have um, answered the exercise habit questionnaire. So I'm just going to give it one more minute here. How do, um, this person's asking, how do I prevent injuring my quads that are overworked given my calf weakness from quote, stork legs? So I think one of the things you kind of think about is just kind of balance, balancing all the activities that you are doing. So if you feel like um, injuring your your calves, I wouldn't want you doing a lot of leg raises or trying to do a lot of knee extensor activity. So it makes, that's basically straightening your legs out or straightening your legs out against a weight or a TheraBand because those are going to be the things that you're going to be using uh, that put you at higher risk because you're using those muscles. Mm -hmm. um, but I do you think, so you shouldn't be doing that to, you know, exhaustion, just doing them all day. But I think some activity is still good for your quadriceps. I think you just have to balance that out with hamstring activities to mm -hmm. keep, um, so hamstring the back of your leg activities to keep a good balance between those two large muscle groups. Okay. That, that was what I was going to add is, you know, making sure you're looking at all of the hip muscles um, as well. Okay. And um, this person says they were seeing a physical therapy group and doing well with um, passive exercises in the pool to help strength, stretch and strengthen, but then they switched or pushed to do more active. What are your thoughts on passive versus active? I'm not 100% sure that I understand what passive exercise is. Um, I know passive stretching, uh, where someone is helping you stretch, 
you know, is, is going to be beneficial if that's what you need. Um, but as far as passive exercise goes, uh, I'm not 100% clear on what you mean. I will ask if that person could maybe expand on their question and then I will go ahead and end the polling and share the results. We, um, what you should be seeing now are our results and what we have really kind of come up with here is 30, the majority of the 36% of the people, they work out three times a week. The biggest concern when working out is fatigue at 48%. 70% um, of the people worked out at home before COVID. What keeps you from working out? 64% um, said no energy. What would help you be more active? 40% um, said more direction and what to exercise. Do you work with anyone to help design your workouts? 68% said no, that's very interesting. 24% um, said yes, a therapist. And 6% said a personal trainer. 8% of you said other, I'm curious to see what kind of other that might be. And then um, what does your stretching routine look like? 36% said the whole body. And this is interesting, 32% said they don't stretch at all. So that's rather interesting. What types of exercises do you do? 44% said strength enhancing. Um, and 40% said cardio. So those are the top two there. What type of weights do you use? 50% said they don't use weights. 40% said they use free weights. So that is really um, kind of interesting. I know that the main overall um, message here is to stretch every day, stretch every day, and to find out that um, not a lot are stretching. It's just, it, it's probably such a simple thing, people don't think much about it. So um, do you have any um, comments on the results that you're seeing? So I'm not surprised that a big limiter is fatigue uh -huh. as, as working out. And a lot of that has to do with people not understanding their limits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they sometimes doing therapy so or, or doing working out. Um, and that's something that, you know, is very individualized person to person, what they'll be able to handle, what they'll be able to tolerate. So for those people who are very concerned about fatigue or even when you're working out, you're getting a lot more excessive fatigue, then I would suggest that your next workout session, you cut it down by 25% of what you're doing. So whether that's 25% of time or 25% of weights that you're doing and see how you tolerate that um, and get to a point where you're not so exhausted, so fatigued after your sessions. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. Do uh, you have recommendations for exercises that are good for both CMT and weight loss? Cardio. <laughs> that's be... the answer for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cardio funny. and diet. Yes, Those diet. Are your, your two biggest things. Okay. Um, and just to kind of go back to the question regarding the passive, we um, heard back from that uh, person. And they said floating in a pool and the therapist stretched different hard to stretch motor skeletal groups. And then they also had them use foam weights to do more resistance exercises in the pool with hopes that that, um, does that help explain what passive is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think that that type of exercise and, and, and stretching is great. And I think if that, allows you to stretch groups that you weren't able to stretch um, on land is is really beneficial. Um, I think maybe them switching to active is, is their way of progressing, you know, so if they think that you were doing well in the pool that maybe they're trying to progress you um, on land. And I think if that is too much for you, that's a conversation you're going to have to have with that therapist and say, you know, that whether or not you're still able to do the rest of your daily activities, if you're having pain after it, you know, whatever's going on that you just have to 
be open with the therapist about. So communication is key. Mm -hmm. Okay. This person says they've just started noticing hand and forearm weakness. Is lifting light weights or squeezing a small ball helpful with that? Yes, I find especially keeping that hand range of motion, that grip strength as much as possible, um, using squeezing a small little ball, like a foam ball or something like that, or um, you know, rubber ball helps kind of keep that strength up, um, as well as doing uh, the range of motion activities of your arm. So turning your forearm back and forth, lifting your wrist up and down. And you can even add, if you have a TheraBand, some resistance activity as well. So tying your TheraBand off and um, putting that on the back of your hand and using some resistance to lift your wrist up, that can be helpful too. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, do you think balance boards could be helpful or dangerous? Do you recommend, and, and second question, do you recommend protein shakes after exercising to help with muscles? I won't speak to the nutrition aspect. I think that that's a good idea, but I do not have any degree in nutrition. Um, but as far as balance boards go, I believe that if you have enough balance that you feel safe, that you're in a safe environment, you've got something to hold on to or someone there with you, that they can be useful. But I wouldn't push yourself to do something like that if if you struggle with balance already, um, I think that, especially if you're on your own, that that, that, that could be dangerous. But if, if you're in a safe environment um, and you can safely get onto a balance board, that I think that that is a, that is a great activity. Yeah. And I'll add in, you know, the issue with the balance board is with CMT, you're losing the nerve that sensate, sensory signals down into your legs and feet. So whether you're developing a numbness or just the inability to know where your joints are in space. And that is not really going to be corrected by using a balance board. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you probably will not gain back much balance even using that. Um, but it may, in some cases, help stretch or stress muscles that are higher up then you may be able to work on at least getting them stronger because they'll be taking over from um, lower muscles that may not be working as well. But mm -hmm. it's not really necessary to do a specific balance for it. Okay. So nutritional component of it. So with CMT, you're not losing the average protein that you are, you would expect um, in a normal healthy muscle. You don't, you don't have the loss to that protein that any protein shake can really give you. Um, and so it's not really that much of a benefit to do protein afterwards because that's not really where your problem is. Understand. It's not necessarily initially the muscle, mm -hmm. it's more of a nerve issue. Got it. Well, um, Abby, are you ready to do a demonstration? Um, sure. someone, someone is wanting to know if you could demonstrate the TheraBand exercise that you are recommending or that you have recommended in the past? Yes, give me one second. I don't have any TheraBands on hand here, but I can be creative. Okay, and while she's looking, I'm just gonna go ahead and ask this one question, Dr. Jones. Okay. Um, what about those of us with severe CMT? You can't swim, um, stand, move ankles or wrists. Do you have any suggestions for those folks to exercise? Well, if you're at the point where you're not able to do most of those things on your own, then really our exercise is more so limited to our stretching program. So having someone around you be able to stretch your arms and legs as much as you're able to tolerate it and stretch your um, wrists, hands, and fingers and do that range of motion, that's really probably where we are. As far as swim, so um, getting into a pool, if you can find a pool or have a therapy center that may have uh, a pool and therapist there, there are some um, floating chairs or floating other things that you may be able, to be able to get that can hold you in the water and still allow you to get some of that weight lift thing off of you. Now it depends on you know a lot of other things whether you have respiratory issues or other things whether you can get in a pool, 
but um, sometimes they're just assistive devices for the pool other than you being out there swimming on your own. Okay. Uh, do you have any advice doing exercises for someone who gets lightheaded upon standing? Well, I think one of the things we need to, you probably need to work with your physician to find out what is causing your lightheadedness. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of different things that can go into that that need to be investigated, whether that is heart related issues or whether that, um, or do they feel that this is from your lungs or do they feel like this is from um, your nerves itself? Because um, nerves like in CMT also go to, are around blood vessels and help the blood vessels, those muscles constrict and um, maintain your blood pressure when you're standing up. Okay. So those sometimes can be affected, those small nerves. But okay. something you should really work with your physician on. Yeah, that can be dangerous. Abby, are you ready? I am. Okay, so are you doing the leg? Yep, so we'll do okay, perfect. exercises first. I'm just using a towel here just to okay. demonstrate. So you can lay down on your back and just push out into the band. So pushing out. Oh, it's okay. These side muscles here. Um, sitting, depending, and I know we talked a little bit about this earlier, but sitting, you can sometimes do... Um, like just raising one leg up against the band, sitting in a chair to work on hip flexors. But again, if your quads are fatigued, you know, that's not gonna be an exercise you'd wanna focus on. Mm -hmm. You can also do some at the ankle and foot. Let's see if I can, but putting around your feet and pushing out into those bands. You're pushing your ankles out? Yep. Okay. Pushing out, and then again, too, you can do up and down. Okay. Um, but again, if you have fatigue or soreness in those muscles, you know, those, you don't want to necessarily push through that mm -hmm. um, in those muscle groups, but those are some things that you can do with a thayer band. Um, Great. Thank you for that. Yep. Um, <clears throat> we have a question here. I used to ride a bike, but have trouble with balancing when starting and stopping. Is a three-wheeled recumbent bike easy on the hips? I have had two hip replacements and a knee replacement. Um, can they be somewhat raised for easy on and off? I don't know if they can be raised or not, but I think it's a good alternative. Okay. But I would also, you know, just recognize that you're doing activity with those quad and hip flexor muscles in a seated position um, mm -hmm. that I would, I would really recommend stretching your hip flexors after that sort of activity. Okay. Let me see, sorry, I have another question, different location. Um, this person says they have a recent diagnosis and have not been to a CMT clinic yet. They work 50 hours a week and it's very overwhelming to find daily exercise routine just by looking at videos with limited time and energy. What do I concentrate on mild CMT. Is there anything she can concentrate on that? And um, she does tend to fall. No, I would say one of the things is if you haven't been to CMT clinic, but you have a primary care mm -hmm. or someone else that can write you a physical therapy order, you don't have to wait. You can ask, okay. you know, to get a physical therapy order um, from that individual and go to the clinic and get some idea information based on, you know, who is actually seeing you and what you're able to do. Um, again, you know, when you're having that mild CMT, we definitely recommend stretching activities to be the bigger things. Um, and depending on um, if you're having ankle instability, uh, you can purchase their bands online too. Mm -hmm. um, even some of these uh, sports stores have their bands um, that you can purchase and use and work on, you know, ankle pumping and doing the activities that Abby showed you. Uh, during the day are all things that can be done. That uh, I was just going to add, depending on what type of job you have, um, ankle circles and ankle pumps, whether you're at your desk or over lunch, are things that you can do. Um, and then as far as the falling a lot, um, depends on what is preceding your falls. If you're catching your toes or tripping, I would definitely look into bracing um, and, and asking your physician about that and see um, 
what your options are there, but if it's more uh, just decreased balance and decreased sensation, um, the only way we're going to combat that is by taking our time, maybe using um, a less restrictive assistive device and strengthening the muscles that, that are assisting um, your ankles in, the, in that balance process. So your knees, your hips, and all of that. Okay, what, is, what are your, and this is for both of you, what are your thoughts and opinions on maybe alternatives such as Tai Chi, yoga um, for CMT folks? I love all of those things. Okay. Anything that is giving you activity and stretching mm -hmm. is beneficial. I like Tai Chi because of their slow movements. Um, there's not a lot, you're not having to carry heavy weights or resistance. Mm -hmm. And you're maintaining these positions for an extended period of time. And so I do like that because it really does help with range of motion. Mm -hmm. And emotionally, uh, Tai Chi is good. It's a calming, relaxing activity for m many of the people that are doing it. So I think there is a benefit to that as well. Okay. Well, I do believe that might be all for our exercise Q&A questions. I really appreciate everyone using the polling feature. I did see a couple notes that a couple of folks couldn't submit their, <clears throat> their answers, so I'm not sure what might have been the problem with that. And to just be very honest, that was the first time I've used the polling feature, so um, I will look into that for our future webinar. So thank you for letting me know that not everybody was able to submit. Um, but we did get a really good chunk of um, participants. So thank you guys very much. And Abby and Dr. Jones, thank you very much for your time and um, your expertise and demonstrating. We will um, proceed to Dr. Zuckner's presentation on genetics and CMT at two o'clock. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.